There was a time when Japanese horror films briefly appeared in the forefront of the film world, dominating the horror market. This era is now referred to as the J-horror boom. They were a big deal in relevant communities, with Japanese films finally seeing the appreciation that they deserved, as well as receiving American remakes to introduce these franchises to those who refused to watch foreign films. During this craze, there were two big titles that stood out from the rest, being the two that Western audiences are most likely to remember today. These two franchises were Ring and Juon, the latter being frequently referred to as The Grudge. Of course, there were many other films I enjoy released under this supposed subgenre, but these two were certainly the most internationally recognised, helped especially by their American remakes, as well as their garbage parodies in scary movies. However, these franchises seemed to die out, not gaining as much notoriety and disappearing from the forefront of the horror genre. J-Horror's Full From Frame wasn't due to these series ending, uh, in fact they continued releasing for years, with Ring receiving its latest instalment Sadako in 2019, and Juon in 2020, seeing the release of another American film titled The Grudge, and a Japanese Netflix series titled Juon Origins. The two series even crossed over with each other in 2016, with Sadako vs Kaiko, which pit the two series antagonists against each other. With two new titles released this year, it seems like Juon is begging for a comeback, even if, like Friday the 13th, they did claim to release their final film. Enter Juon Origins, the freshest instalment in the series in over a decade. Being marketed as a prequel of sorts, it actually functions as more of a reimagining of the franchise. It makes a lot of different choices to previous instalments, not only with the kinds of protagonists the series focuses on, but also with the spirits themselves. It doesn't just drag and drop Kyoko and Toshio into a new setting like other sequels and remakes have, and the kind of story it tells is also quite different to what has come before. Its themes and structure did remind me of particular moments in the franchises, and there will always be comparisons to be drawn with series like this, but overall, it felt like it went in a different direction to what came before, which is incredibly refreshing, especially in times when the same products seem to get released just with new packaging. The big difference for this series is that it is dark. The Juon franchise has obviously never been targeted towards children, more of the ghosts and references to death and suicide, but Origins takes it a step further, featuring traumatic moments that I won't mention as to not give away any spoilers. I implore you to hold off on reading articles describing these moments, unless you've already seen the series, as the shocking moments won't be as shocking if you know they're coming. Seeing all these unique character choices and story directions is so refreshing and the perfect way to bring back life into an otherwise dying series. Rebooting a franchise is also convenient, meaning that someone can watch the series without any prior knowledge of the franchise, feeling fulfilled and without confusion. Its six episode length is perfect for the series, an easy length for binging in one sitting, yet still broken up in a way that those with less time on their hands can still watch it at their own pace, with each episode only lasting roughly half an hour. Episodes end with great cliffhangers too, making you desperate to see what happens next. Netflix is a great home for a series like this too, with horror becoming bigger on TV, especially TV streaming. Netflix's own horror-inspired series Stranger Things rose to immense popularity, and even less popular series like Dark still managed to reach a loyal fanbase. Some are even comparing Juan Origins to American Horror Story's debut series Murder House with its location-based spirits. This, however, is unfair as a criticism of Juan Origins, as these aspects originate from the many Juan films released long before American Horror Story. But if making that comparison draws more potential audience into Juan Origins, I'm happy about it. Those who enjoy that kind of show will definitely be able to find enjoyment in this too. Watching Origins, I felt influenced from two of my favourite Juan films, Juan the Grudge 2 and Juan White Ghost, in the way that it sets up its supernatural elements and ends up paying them off with big reveals later on, acting as mind-blowing revelations where almost everything starts adding up. Overall, I'm very glad to see one of my favourite series back, not only with a new piece of media, but a genuinely well-made and fresh instalment that can please long-time fans, as well as introducing new audiences to what we love about this series. Anyone with a Netflix account, which is most people these days, should give this series a go.